The challenges of public intracity transport system in the 80s paved the way for the rise of motorcycles, popularly called Okada, as a means of public transportation in Nigeria. Over time, some of the operators have been responsible for many accidents leading to permanent disability, even death. Now, in recent times, insecurity in the northern part of Nigeria caused many of that region to relocate to the south, making ends meet with commercial motorcycle transportation. Its emergence, its operations, and ban by the Lagos State Government will be our focus on special report. You're welcome to the program. I'm Alumide McCauley. Motorcycle operators began to operate in Nigeria in the cities of Calabar and Yola in the late 1970s and the 1980s and spread to Lagos. This trend spread when the Federal Civil Service was reduced in the 1970s and people lost their jobs. As the economy declined and the city population grew, people had to find other ways to survive, including operating Okadas. Private motorcycles were converted for commercial use. Over the years, there have been reported clashes between the motorcycle operators and police officers as well as transport union workers over rights to operate in some routes and places. These operators have also been accused of committing crime and allowing criminals to escape. Such negative branding has led to sub-national governments to take steps to regulate or ban the operation of operators in such territories. Between 2008 and January 2020, more than 20 of Nigeria's 36 states partially or completely banned the operation of Okada riders in their states. In 2008, the then River State Governor, Roti Miyamichi, was the first to impose a ban on the use of Okada over reasons of insecurity and attack by militants in Port Harcourt, the state capital. In Kanu State, Nigeria's northwest region, in 2017, the state traffic agency pronounced a ban on the use of Okada across the state capital. This became imperative at the height of Boko Haram attacks in that region. On January 27th, the government announced a ban on motorcycles and three-wheeled vehicles in major areas of the state, which went into effect five days later. The impact was swift. Commuters in the city waited for buses that never came, forcing many to resort to walking long distances in the absence of the bikes they'd come to rely on. But populist politicians sometimes mobilize Okada riders to support their political ambitions and seem to sympathize with them. Such romance often fizzles out soon after electoral mandates are secure. In May 2002, the Lagos state government revisited the need to enforce the ban owing to the menace of Okada riders across the state. It came to a head with the recent murder of a sound engineer, David Imo, killed in Lekki area of Lagos. This meeting called at the instance of the state governor, Babajide Samolu, with area commanders and divisional police officers is to enforce the ban on Okada riders. The whole of Ikeja local government, the whole of Sule local government, the whole of Etiosa local government, the whole of mainland local government, the whole of Apapa local government, and the whole of Lagos Island local government. A total ban. A total ban on this and all of the highways effective from the 1st of June. This is the first banning that we're going to be embarking on so that others know that within a short while, it's either they get out or they look for something else to do. And from 1st of June, from 1st of June, there are, there are LCDs that are underneath them. We're going to publish them. We're going to list all of them. And so we're given the notice now, right, where you can begin to do your recce, begin to do, you know, your strategy. From the 1st of June, please, we want all of the Okada to be completely off this major road. Let people begin to make their own independent alternative. We have actually even provided those alternatives. We have bought last mile buses for them. Those are some of the things we said. They are effective. They are working. We have the medium capacity buses, we have the high capacity buses, and before the end of the year, we're also still bringing rail onto this corridor. Days after, some leaders of the Hausa community in Lagos appealed to Governor Babajide Sonolu to reverse the ban on Okada, while this group of Northern Extraction backs the decision. 
Another worry that most of the riders are predominantly from the northern part of the country, the Arewa Consultative Forum in Lagos says a handful of the Kada riders are foreigners from Niger, Cameroon or Chad. Operators in some local government in the state is not a new law. It has been in existence for over 10 years. We resolve today unanimously that all our members must comply with the provisions of the law of Lagos State. We are law abiding and will always continue to intimate all our members to continue to be law abiding and operate within the ambit of the law. Two, we support all measures taken by the Lagos State Government in its efforts towards protecting lives and properties of all Lagosians. Three, we condemn in totality the activities of all criminal elements who are mostly foreigners from the Niger Republic, Chad, Cameroon, and other neighboring countries who have infiltrated the ranks of those genuine riders, thereby perpetrating all forms of crime in Lagos State and are constituting serious threats to the lives and security of life and properties of Lagosians. Four, we are calling on all security agents to identify and arrest all those criminal elements masquerading as Okada riders. Five, we are also taxing the Nigerian Immigration Service to step, step up its action along the borderline in checking the influx of all those foreign elements coming into the country without genuine intention. Six, we are in total commitment and support to the administrative policy of the Lagos State Government in getting rid of all security threats, promoting peace and tranquility, safeguarding lives and properties of Lagosians and the massive provision of development of infrastructure facilities for all Lagosians. Seven, we are calling on all well-meaning Arewa community members to comply with our common resolve and avoid <coughs> the local government of Apapa, Surulere, Lagos Island, Lagos Mainland, Etiosa, and Ikeja. Eight, we will work with the Lagos State Government and the Association of Arewa or Kata Riders towards implementation of the extent law and documentation of all riders in all local government of Lagos State. We must have adequate data on everyone. It gave us an opportunity for us to review the recent pronouncement on the future planning of Okada on some selected local government and LCDAs, and we're able to put strategies in place, you know, all of us um, collectively, been able to identify um, a lot of other things that we need to do around ensuring that we have the populist buy-in, um, advocacy, ensuring that we communicate efficiently with the citizens, you know, all of this is meant towards ensuring that, you know, it, it's a, it's a people-driven initiative, you know, that we all agreed, you know, to live and to comport ourselves in this similar manner. And we know what has been the effect of this. And so I'm happy that all of us, all of us, security operatives and government are on the same page with this. And we will also be going ahead with our plans. Good morning, sir. Thereafter, a team of enforcement officers drawn from the police, the military, and other paramilitary personnel show their combat readiness for the task ahead. From Ikeja to Juelegba, Suliri, Aja, Yanopaja, and its environs, the enforcement team make their statement clear that the ban will be enforced across the six local government areas. The message we are actually passing to the members of the public, particularly the criminally minded people, is that there is synergy among all the security agencies and we are ready, battle ready, to fight crime and criminality in 
every nook and corner of this command. This activity, this, the, what has taken, has, has taken place today, is a signal to those that are actually not ready to abide by the rules, by the laws of the government. We are ready, battle ready, and we ensure that this ban is actually enforced and it will be a reality. It is not only in this state that this ban has taken place, it has taken place in some other states and there is no way it cannot take place here in Lagos. We are ready and we fight it until we succeed. But these startups were operating in an environment where banks had not always been welcome. After a former Lagos governor banned Okadas from 475 major routes in the city in 2012, New legislation in 2018 under a different administration muddied the waters and offered entrepreneurs a window of opportunity. According to Lagos Transport Sector Reform Law, no one is allowed to ride, drive or propel a motorcycle or tricycle on a major highway. But a section within the same law exempts motorcycles from those same restrictions, as long as riders and passengers follow the listed rules and drivers ride bikes above a 200 cylinder capacity CC. The governor was addressing the DPOs, and it was retreating that this law exists. This my previous pronouncement exists. Go back to the road and enforce the law. And it was gracious to give up till June 1. So it is enough for people living in those areas to understand that one, Okada is not a means of public transition. And the reason is this, that it has been allowed over time. It has become part and parcel over time because of economic reasons. And that's why government is always careful in how you undo the enforcement. Because of the economic situation, Okada gradually crept. You know, Kekena, the National Agency for Poverty Eradication. So Okada, Napep, and all those informal kind of political came in for people to have a means of livelihood. So what should be more emphasized now is that from the areas where they have been restricted, sorry, now totally banned, please find something else to do. One, two, move to areas where it is allowed. Or three, go and acquire new skills. And the governor was clear on giving options for people who may be affected and what could be done. Even though, even though, even though I believe there is no need to be talking about alternative because it was never an option. And it has always been the law since 2012. It has only taken different faces over time. And another thing that makes the thing to keep growing, you know, so many things are happening in the country. And when this thing continues to happen, that it is being allowed, not enforced, more people will come in believing it is the norm. When people discover that it is not acceptable, they will not move to start taking it as a business. And people should also not take it to be sectional, and maybe uh, it's against some part. I'm from Agege. The people who ride or carry out from Agege, I know a reasonable number of them are from a particular state in the southwest of Nigeria. It's not from either the north. When you go to my my two Apopo Ushodi, the people that ride or carry are from another part of Nigeria, mostly from the south-south and the southeast. So it is not, it, it should not be stigmatized that it's from one northern part of Nigeria or one south. No, it is every part of Nigeria as representatives in this business. And they are becoming a nuisance. They are becoming a terrible nuisance. And like somebody put it, you cannot be, it cannot be managed but for chaos. It is not a means of public transportation. It should never be revisited. They are the reason why we have this problem. Those people who brought those schemes, are they using it in their own country? Oh, pay, 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 whatever. E alien. Not for what it is for something that is within the law. The law of our land says it is not a means. Our policy says it is not a means of public transportation because it is unsafe. I managed the data for, for almost six years. When we when when it was done during 2012, by the time we implemented it in uh, September, between September and December, we have brought deaths on the road from Okada to not more than one, sometimes zero in a month. I know what I'm, and we have prevented 450 something deaths in three months. So what are you talking about? 
Whether it is E or Canada or A or Canada or B or Canada, it is not a means of public transportation. You cannot put somebody on the back of a two-tire vehicle and call it public transport. So don't let people, because they are looking for money, that I call blood money. Blood money. You saw what happened in Abuja a few days ago. An Okada rider had the passenger uh, possibly knocked down by a vehicle. The Okada was leased, and now we have lost lives and properties. That's why I said you cannot manage it. That's managing it. You can only manage it for chaos. The security experts told us in 2020, I was part of the committee, 2011. They told us it is nothing but chaos. To manage it is chaos. The army told us, the police told us, the navy told us, the air force told us at a joint meeting shared by a retired assistant inspector general of police that government and that was why the war then was restriction but it was like a semi ban and it was to be uh, 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 improved as a public transport system i remember governor fashola said it will be most comfortable when the blue line comes online now the current administration is bringing online the red line is but you can't wait you can't keep seeing people dying you can't see keep seeing people lynched. Something must be done. Every single life is important. Every single limb is important. Every single arm is important. There is enough things for people to do. People should go. We have farming. The farm is suffering. We have carpenters. We can't find good ones. You have missions. You have so many professions. June 1st, the long-awaited day of the ban of Okada in select local government areas of Lagos State. In Apapa and Yaba areas, part of the prescribed access, there are visible signs of compliance to the state directive. In Ikeja area, the level of compliance is high, while operators are still seen in inner streets across Ogba. In Ujodubega, Ikeja and other areas, residents walk to their various bus stops to catch their transportation. Some recalcitrant riders face oncoming vehicles at Ojota to pick up passengers to Ketu and Ikorodu areas. Here we are walking between Lagos and Ogun State. We don't enter express. So I'm pleading for Lagos State government to pardon those to the workforce street. This is Morgan Street. This is not Ogunis Road. Please, Lagos, Lagos State government, you pardon us, please. Allow them to look for what they have to feed their family. Please, sir, we are not working in uh, uh, Lagos. We are not working in Express, Maryland, or Jota. We don't go to that side. We work in the street, Morgan Street, between Bandre, Lagos Bandre and Ogun State Bandre. Please, we are pleading for Lagos State government. Because if we work many people, most of them have finished school now. There's no job. Even though, even though those who finish school, to get a job is not easy. Please. Bike is what some people used to feed their family, take care of their family, pay house rent. And before you know it now, the landlord will increase your house rent. Please, we are pleading for Lagos State government to allow those that are working in the street. I'm not against the executive order to ban, to ban the operation of the Okara riders in Lagos State. In as much that um, government is trying to ensure the safety of, this, of the members of the society, what they are trying to do is to make sure that the security of um, people living in Lagos State is ensured. And it is the duty of government that um, they also uphold law and order in Lagos State. What happened recently concerning how Okada riders operate in Lagos State shows that they are not also complying with the laws and order. But alternatively, I believe government should also ensure that um, they put law in place. They can be regulated. It's not that they cannot be regulated. Yes, these people, this is what they use to survive. So government can put things in place. They can, uh, they can do a kind of legal framework that can regulate them. I, I know of um, Gokara, I know of Ope. Those guys, they have um, um, a, a technology that you can easily use to trace their activities. But now, if government can put that in place, regulate them in such a way that if these people commit any offense, they can easily identify the individual that perpetrated that particular offense. 
is not to bind them totally. So binding them totally now, we create a lot of um, disorderliness in the society. Some of them will go to the street to protest, some of them will go and do something else. They can even take laws into their hands by going to rob and all those things. But my own, um, my own opinion to this is that government should ensure that they put law in place to regulate Okara riders. The law is there, the law has been in place. But enforcement of that law is not going to be done by the executive governor of Lagos State. It is the police that have the mandate to enforce the law. So now, it is high time we begin to question the police. How do you enforce law? If you want to enforce law, there are many ways you can go about it. So the enforcement is not, is not the issue of the government. The enforcement is the issue of the agency who are in charge to enforce the law. So the fact is that the, there are many laws that are there that the agencies are not enforcing. And most, most of them, don't, they normally compromise. But I believe that the executive order, being, um, uh, the, the one being circulated of recent by the governor of Lagos State, is not out of order, it's not political. I'm sure it's because of the incident that happened in Lekki that, make him to, that made him to enforce this law, to make sure that the police implement this law. The law has been in existence. During the time of Fachola, he, he, he made sure that the police enforce this law. During the time of Ambody, the same thing. So now, the law has been there. It's not political. It is because of the incident that happened in Lekki that made the government and deem it fit that this law must be implemented. But my own opinion, my own submission is that if at all they want to enforce this law, they should put a legal framework in place that will also guide and protect and regulate the Okara riders. Total band may not be, it may not be, it may not be solution to the problem. It may not be total solution to the problem. Are you okay? Also in Abuja, the activities of these riders in the outskirts of the city center, residents say, is becoming unpardonable. So many of us that are running business in this area, we are done for now. And so many majority, majority of us have family that we are feeding. Many people are, are crying, many families, because this is where they end their living. This is the road leading to Day Day International Market, located in Abuja Metropolitan Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. Conflict erupted around this area after a woman was said to have been killed in a crash involving a commercial motorcycle rider also known as Okada, and a truck. A statement by the FCT authorities confirm at least four persons were killed in the conflict. Normalcy is beginning to return to the area as armed security personnel are now manning patrols. As members of this team, area command and divisions continue to enforce the ban across the designated areas, residents will only want the tempo to be sustained for sanity to remain in the commercial city. That's our package for the week. Do join us again next time for a fresh edition of the program. Thanks for watching.